Ghostbusters Afterlife is finally upon us. We finally have an actual official third Ghostbusters movie. Ghostbusters Afterlife is the continuation of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 in which Egon Spengler's grandchildren and their mother are evicted from their house and they have to go and live at Egon's farm in the middle of a small town. And when they discover different types of earthquakes, Egon's grandchildren decide to take up the mantle of the Ghostbusters and bust some ghosts once and for all. An actual third Ghostbusters movie has been in the works for a while and has actually entered development hell to the point where they weren't even going to make it. Because they weren't even going to make it, most of it due to Bill Murray and him not wanting to make a third Ghostbusters movie after how people weren't receptive towards his performance in Ghostbusters 2, Sony decided, well, screw it, let's just reboot the thing and then it was an all-female cast, which wasn't the problem with Ghostbusters Answer the Call didn't make enough money, wasn't well received by audiences at all. And so now Ivan Reitman, the director of the first two, his son has come along and has decided to co-write and direct an actual third Ghostbusters movie where Dan Aykroyd returns, Bill Murray actually returns, Ernie Hudson returns, now we have a new Ghostbusters adventure that concludes the trilogy. I had a lot of fun with Ghostbusters Afterlife. I think that this concludes the Ghostbusters story, if it even stops here, in a very satisfactory way. The thing is, is that it feels like a definitive ending for the Ghostbusters series. It feels like a definitive trilogy capper and that there's nowhere else they can go. However, I do think that the movie leaves a slight bit of wiggle room if they wanted to expand it. Personally, I'm 50-50 on that. I think that there could be possibilities that, depending on how much money they make, that there will be future Ghostbusters films, but at the same time, I just want it to end here. I just, a nice, well-rounded trilogy of Ghostbusters movies is fine with me. And by the way, Ghostbusters 2 does not suck. Ghostbusters 2 is still good. Just not as good as the first one. This movie had a tough task because Harold Ramis died in 2014. I think that really sank the prospects of an actual Ghostbusters 3. They had to work around Harold Ramis' death and how to incorporate Egon or whether or not they should even incorporate Egon. Egon is incorporated in the film in ways that I think will satisfy fans. I found this movie to have a very touching and respectful tribute to both Egon and... Harold Ramis himself, to the point where I was legit crying, like legitimately in tears, a grown ass man who doesn't get that emotional, but understands like, I, but actually has like different feelings when watching a movie. That's why I always say, hey, the emotional core in this movie is really strong. I actually started crying at the end of this movie because it was a fitting tribute to someone that meant so much to a big fan base, someone that had created a movie that had developed a huge cult following, and without Harold Ramis and without the character of Egon Spengler, this entire series would not be possible. It wouldn't exist. The movie is also very successful at passing the torch on to the next generation of Ghostbusters. Just how a movie like this should be. The Force Awakens was very similar, using the old legacy characters of Star Wars to pass the torch on to a new generation of characters, without forgetting about what the legacy characters were all about. And I feel like Afterlife did it in a very similar way. Introducing new characters that we can grow attached to for generations. New characters that feel as if they should have been part of this world from the get-go. This feels like it was a movie that was perfectly planned out from the beginning. It is very full of nostalgia. Something that has gotten a lot of criticism for it, but I'm never against nostalgia in a film. Here, I don't think it's done wrong. I think it's done right for the most part. There's a lot of fan service in here, a lot of nostalgia, a lot of callbacks to the original Ghostbusters films. Most of it works. Where I think the movie actually falters is what the new generation of Ghostbusters have to face because it is a callback to the original Ghostbusters films, but at the same time, it's really just a rinse and repeat kind of thing. It's a carbon copy, copy and paste. We've been here, done that before, and you can say, well, if it ain't broke, why change it? I understand that approach. I was fine with them using the antagonist that they actually used. I just wish they had changed it up a little bit because now I feel as if you're getting into remake territory. And I feel as if that's where a lot of the criticism for this movie could stem, where it's just, oh, they're, hey, they're just remaking 
scenes from the first one, or they're just remaking scenes from the second one. That's my big criticism with Afterlife. But McKenna Grace is definitely a star in the making. She steals every scene she's in in the entire movie. Loved everything with McKenna Grace. Finn Wolfhard has been dreaming of being a Ghostbuster ever since he was in Stranger Things. So now he's in It and now he's in Ghostbusters. This dude's just going to be surrounded by spooky shit his entire life. He's never going to get out of the horror genre. I'm calling it now. Paul Rudd wasn't in the movie as much as I thought he was going to be. Or I should say, I guess... You know what? I take that back. Paul Rudd was in it as much as I thought he would be, but I just wish he was utilized in a little bit of a better way, in a better manner. And it really just ties back to the antagonist's plan. And Paul Rudd wasn't as funny as he has been in previous movies. So for me, Paul Rudd was a slight disappointment in this movie, but... Going back to the positives, let's talk about the humor because Ghostbusters has a specific type of humor. The first Ghostbusters movie was very cynical with its humor. It had a very cynical sense of humor. It had a dark sense of humor. The humor was really woven in naturally and more subtly. Even in the second one, the second one got away from the cynical dark humor and focused more on family friendly humor, but even then, it never it was never slapstick. And when it comes to Ghostbusters 2016, I think that that was the major problem with that movie. It wasn't the fact that it was female leads. I just found that the female leads weren't funny because everything they were doing in that movie was slapstick. Ghostbusters is not slapstick. We get back to the more natural, subtle humor, mostly with this movie. There is some forced humor. There's some forced family jokes, you know, that, oh, here's some jokes for, like, the little kids. Here's some jokes for the teenagers. But, hey, here's, here's the subtle, natural, dark, cynical humor for the adults out there as well. So it's a blend of the humor from the first Ghostbusters with the humor of the second Ghostbusters with some really dry humor that doesn't actually really work. There are some scenes, though, in the middle of this movie where... I, I, it was, they were all just played to comedic effect, and I said, oh no, I gotta see how this goes. I was dying laughing. There's a scene in a Walmart where I'm like, I, I could have watched 10 hours of that scene and would have been satisfied. I could, if that was the whole movie, that would have been amazing. The humor mostly works. It's just when it delves more into family-friendly humor, especially humor geared towards little kids, I didn't find it as funny. I found the dark, cynical humor more funny and when it was more subtle and more naturally woven in like it was in the first movie. There are a few things in Afterlife that are slightly disappointing, but I would say a majority of Afterlife delivered on the promise of passing the torch on to a new generation and honoring the legacy of Harold Ramis in a way that I thought was satisfactory. When, when it comes to a Ghostbusters movie with a fallen icon like Harold Ramis and a new generation of Ghostbusters, that's really all I can ask for. That's all I can ask for in any franchise that is introducing new characters and miss and bringing back older characters to help pass the baton on to the new generation. And Ghostb in Ghostbusters like Star Wars and a few other franchises that have done it as well, really succeeds in doing it, despite a couple of major issues that I have with some of its humor and the writing in terms of the antagonist and what they actually do with the antagonist. I just, I just didn't think it was all that original and I think they could have changed it up a little bit. But I really enjoyed Ghostbusters Afterlife with a full bucket of popcorn. So guys, have you seen Ghostbusters Afterlife? I want some feedback. Drop me your thoughts of Ghostbusters 3 in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere. <laughs>